The past always feels a bridge when it comes to the lives and stories of queer folks. It's always full of may haves and suspected but cannot be confirmed. And of course there were same gender loving people that existed in the past. We kind of have to search for them and signs of sentience in paintings and letters from centuries past. Fiction, which is another entity where we're sort of left with the same inconclusive queer readings of texts written by men and women that were possibly homosexual and alluded to queer attraction in some of their most famous works. But The Prophets goes beyond that. It gives queer folks passion, dedication, and love. Naming the two of them, Samuel and Isaiah's, relationship as something that is recognizably different to those that bear witness to it, but also a piece of something forgotten. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing a review of The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. This is a no spoiler review, so I'm not going to let you know everything that happens in this book. But if you do want to hear my thoughts on The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr., keep on watching and let's get right into it. So The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. is one of my, it was one of my most anticipated reads of 2021. It came out on January 5th, which I was super excited about. And then I actually got a hold of an arc of the book. I sat down around the, the Christmas holiday and I just really just dove in. And I have to say that that it just really gave me everything that I needed. So The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. follows Samuel and Isaiah, and they are basically attached at the hip. Um, they are enslaved on the Halifax, the, Halifax, the Halifax plantation in Mississippi, and they sort of live on, on the outskirts almost of the plantation in this shed where they take care of the animals together and they just have this relationship that is whispered about and that people sort of get a different vibe from. And it's something that actually, it's not something that necessarily scares anybody, but it actually brings everyone joy seeing them together. It's whispered about, it's sort of like, an almost like unspoken thing, but everybody enjoys seeing them together and this closeness and this love that they have for each other, whether that is platonic or romantic. But people do understand that there is something different about the relationship that they share. And so where the plot really goes without giving any spoilers is you have this man named Amos. He really just, he, he just really wants to be important. And so he is sort of given the full reins by the slave master to basically spread the gospel. He's invited into the big house, he's taught, and he is spreading um, Christianity and sort of teaching Christianity to um, the slaves on this plantation and having these services and where it sort of goes completely left is he he makes the choice to use religion to turn people away from Samuel and Isaiah. And we sort of see this chain of events that happens because of people um, sort of turning away from them because of religion. And so who with just that, you have to know that this story is, it's going places that few dare to go. You get all of these multiple different perspectives of these women and also um, the slave master, his son and his wife, but mainly it focuses on these women sort of telling their stories and, and sort of like linking, all of these stories linking to that of Samuel and Isaiah's um, and you also get like this, these, these stories of queer women being kings in, um, back in the motherland and, you know, queer marriage um, from the past, like with the ancestors. And 
who it just really is so beautifully done. I just really admired what Robert Jones Jr. did with this. And when I closed this novel, I knew that I did not understand everything. It's a very deeply complex text. It has vivid imagery, super delicate lyricism, and these masterfully intertwined biblical allusions. For example, we have Essie. She is Amos's wife and she has a baby and she names him Solomon. And there's, there's this meaning to why she named her son Solomon, if you know Solomon from the Bible and, um, and the story that goes along with that. So you get all of these different things, you know, as, as you know, a young black person that grew up in the church, I, I understood a lot of that, but at the same time you have like these, um, you have the titles of chapters um, named after books of the Bible and you have the character names and you have the, uh, just the allusions to, to events in the Bible that, you know, like it definitely, it will take a second read. Um, so I'll definitely be reading this again, but it, but it's so good. And, and I really, I, I, I close this book knowing that I would be revisiting it over and over, like like my favorite novels. And that is because it's like nothing that I've ever laid my eyes on before. And, um, and so you really have an author tackling something as monumental as two men being in love during the time of chattel slavery. And he does this with so much care with so much beauty and so much tenderness. And that is what drew me in instantly, like first chapter. And so I think that I think that in order to be critical of this novel, one thing I will say, and this kind of goes back to who Robert Jones Jr. is as a person, uh, his brand, the uh, son of Baldwin, and um, which everybody kind of knows him by, uh, it instantly drew comparisons to Baldwin and Toni Morrison. And I think that those comparisons, they almost do you a disservice. And, you know, you go into it and as somebody that I, I read, uh, I read three Toni Morrison books last year. Um, I read Sula, I read Song of Solomon and I read Jazz. And I'm definitely going to be going into this year reading more. Um, and, and then I think I ended the year before reading Beloved and The Bluest Eye. And so like when you're familiar with Toni Morrison's work, you go in looking for like knowing that you're going to see certain things. And I think that like those multiple character perspectives definitely are a nod to Toni Morrison and show her inspiration and and um, and the language and the way that these black characters are written. Um, and, you know, the way that you sort of get these flashbacks and different things. They're all very Toni Morrison-esque and I don't think, and it's not like word for word Toni Morrison, but you definitely, you definitely wish for more like that he would kind of step away from that and focus on the one story. Um, because I think that they're definitely, you know, wanting to give these multiple perspectives is very important. Showing all of these different people bearing witness to this love is very important but you almost begin to move away from the story of Isaiah and Samuel at certain points. And that is one thing that I just really wanted because I went into this novel wanting to see Isaiah and Samuel and their relationship and more of that, and you know, their intimate conversations and you get a little bit less of that. I definitely would love to see like a little bit more of them. If, if Robert Jones Jr. decides to sort of like maybe continue the story because the ending, the ending shook me up. I think that if Robert Jones Jr. does decide to maybe like tell, like, you know, maybe even do like a, like a novella, something very short, showing a little bit more of their backstory of their relationship, um, I would love that. I really would love that. I think that it definitely was very, very important to show each of these characters witnessing or bearing witness to a love that really you could describe as nothing less than divine. You see this light shining over Samuel and Isaiah and sort of them, you know, all of them have have dealt with, you know, their trauma and all of these things and being seeing their families ripped apart, being ripped apart from their children. You know, when they see this love between Samuel and Isaiah, they they can't really explain it. It's something that can that really can't be explained.
But even though it did confuse some, even though it did confuse some and spurred anger and hatred in others, it really served as a reminder to those such as the women in this story that carried this story who really took the time to really see that there is something beyond. And that's, that's just, that's really what I appreciated about this. It was such a phenomenal novel. I encourage everybody to pick it up. The cover is gorgeous, love it. Um, and Robert Jones Jr. is really onto something with this. And I hope that it just really opens the doors for other queer writers to tackle stories like this. Hope that you enjoyed this review of The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. Go pick up this book and I will see all of you in the next one. Make sure you thumbs up this video, press that subscribe button if you haven't already and drop a comment in the comment section below. And I will see all of you in the next one. And always remember that you are loved.